In this episode of the Online Classroom, we're looking at the system validation topic. It's part of the system resilience theme. We're looking at a systems approach to a straightforward problem, keeping a lawn neat. Resilience has many different definitions in different disciplines. Here we're using resilience as an idea that you can build into your system through testing and validation throughout the design process, not just at the very end. Part of this is the determination of tests to check that your system design meets the customer requirements. There are five stages of testing that we're considering at this stage. The first step, the analytical models, is really at the conceptual stage of the design. Proof of concept is where you start testing some of the assumptions that you've made and system prototype starts to look at the interrelationships between the different subsystems. Operational testing looks at the product or design out in the real world when real people are using the design and support testing is when the product is out there and you're providing support to the design. At this stage of the course we're really just interested in the first three analytical models, proof of concept and system prototypes. If we reconsider the V diagram and make it specific for engineering 2225, you could consider the system resilience topic as testing each of the different stages of the conceptual design. Once we've gone through the system resilience topic, then we should have a design that is fairly robust and we can take that to the system evaluation or the design selection stage. Remember the attributes cascade for the first two primary attributes of the cuts grass customer requirement. The first step is identifying what attributes require which type of test. Here, analytical testing could probably take place on some of these attributes. So for example, the replaceable attribute of the system when it comes to the blades doesn't necessarily need a full prototype to be able to test. At this stage, we could probably just come up with a CAD model to show how the design is going to meet that attribute. This is similar for other attributes. Each would have a separate analytical way of testing whether or not the attribute was met in the design. For example, looking at the replaceability of a system, we might have a test that looks at the design of the screw. At the proof of concept stage, the tests start to become a little bit more difficult. The adjustable speed attribute, for example, isn't something that we can just test through a simulation or model we need to start looking at how that is going to happen within our system. Likewise, each of the attributes listed here would need a different proof of concept test to ensure that the design meets that requirement. If we look at the example of attribute 2.22, easy to maneuver, you could set up a test rig that had some sort of representative weight, some sort of wheels and some sort of handle to try and validate the design against the easy to maneuver attribute. You would design your test rig in such a way that you could change some of the variables. So for example, you might want to change the wheelbase or the wheel size quite easily. By creating a test rig to show this proof of concept, you're able to run a number of simulations without having to invest too deeply in your design. Generally, the primary and secondary attributes re require a much more developed prototype to test that the design meets the attribute. For example, attribute A1.1, fast spinning, would be very difficult to test in a proof of concept. This is because all of the tertiary attributes would need to be met for that secondary attribute to be valid. When we're looking at the fast spinning attribute, we're not just looking at the speed that it spins, but we're considering it as part of the three tertiary attributes and the interrelationships between them. At the primary attribute level, you're really starting to develop a well-formed system prototype. So for the effective cutting mechanism to be true, you're starting to not just look at the spinning, but the sharp blade aspect. To be able to test the primary attribute here, you'd probably need a working model of the system. An important part at each stage of the testing is the procedure that you're going to use to determine whether or not your design passes or fails the criteria. There are formal tests that standards organizations enforce on a number of different design criteria. For your design, it's probably more practical to come up with your own set of testing procedures. A really simple set of test procedures might include which attribute you're looking at, who does the testing, so what sorts of qualifications that person might need, be it understanding of electronics and electrician certificate. Procedure outline, so this is something that is repeatable and other people could come along and follow the same test that you've done and get the same results. 
and what the pass fail criteria is. This is likely to be the benchmark that you've established in your customer requirements. So let's work through an example for a proof of concept test. We're going to look at attribute A1.1.1, adjustable speed. So here I need the test person to be a technician. You might also include some sort of relevant qualifications or perhaps regulations or safety might dictate what type of person can do this test. The pass fail criteria that I've got here is to adjust to the customer required speed plus minus 10%. And you would refer back to the customer requirements to find out what that speed is. So a really simple, so a really simple example of that adjustable speed attribute might be that first you power the control unit and the cutting motor without blade. So at this stage there's no need to have the whole cutting system working, we're just really looking at the control unit for the speed. You might bring it up to the minimum speed. Third, you might measure the speed and perhaps the response time it took to get to that speed. Next, you might adjust the system to the maximum speed. Next, you might adjust the control unit to the maximum speed. And again, you might measure that speed and response time and then you would power off. There are some flaws in this simple test. For example, here we're not testing whether or not the system could slow down. So when you come up with your testing procedure, it's worthwhile thinking not just one way that you could use it, but many ways that the user could be interacting with the system. This might mean that we need to put additional steps within our procedure, such as adjusting back down to the minimum speed and measuring the response time again. If we were to take that proof of concept and look at the procedure for the prototype level, it would likely to include more stages as you'd be looking at it at a slightly higher level. So by the time that you were able to test the prototype, you might need to include some more system safety steps. This might be because you've got the cutting subsystem working and it's got the blades on them. You might also need to consider some factors such as system interoperability. At the prototype stage, you might also be testing for multiple attributes. So no longer are you testing each unit, you might go about testing a number of attributes within the same test. This brings us to the validation of the system. Once you've gone through the process of designing your tests and implementing your tests, hopefully your design will meet those tests and you will have a validated design. This validation shows that your design meets the customer requirements. If we go way back to the House of Quality Online Classroom, there were two aspects that weren't covered and this is really where the testing fits in. Down the bottom you have the benchmarks and targets, so these would be the, the values that you're looking to test for. And on the right you have the comparisons, so this is how your product compares to other products on the market, or perhaps with other ideas that you have had for your design. Ideally these comparisons between different products would be made by following the procedure that you had implemented for your testing. This brings us to the end of the online classroom for the system validation topic. The two key ideas from this online classroom are that the system is validated through a number of tests that validate how the system performs against the customer requirements. So this is really going through and looking at each attribute and making sure that the system performs against the requirements. The second and probably more important point is that testing occurs at a number of levels and it is an iterative process. So just because you've got a proof of concept test, it might not necessarily mean that your system is going to work when you combine all of the different subsystems. That's it for this episode of the Online Classroom. Check out the self-tests on Waddle and the core reading that's available on the course website. We'll see you next time.